Hello, hello. Welcome to Inklings with Irina, the weekly energy show connecting you to your intuitive guidance system. And today I want to talk about what do you do when you can't sleep? So when you just can't sleep, what's going on? And this is a topic that many people have addressed, but I want to bring bring it around in a slightly different perspective from the energy side of things. So if we haven't met yet, my name is Irina Miller. I'm an intuitive energy guide and I have been, and speaker, I've been guiding women for over 20 years in how to connect to their gut instincts, how to get deep rest, relieve and alleviate the stress that has been keeping them up at night and causing them to be stuck in a worry or limiting belief. So let's jump right in. When it comes up, when I work with my clients one-on-one, -on -one, if this comes up where they just can't sleep at night, they're being woken up in the middle of the evening, what I tend to do is I go to these three questions first. The first one is, when was the last time you've unplugged? Now, this we hear a lot, right? In just everyday modern sleep vernacular, they say, okay, unplug from electronics. Don't watch anything too close to bedtime. Don't do anything with a blue screen. You know, you hear all that stuff. But from an energy perspective, when was the last time you unplugged from everybody else in your world? Here's the thing, emotions, which are essentially energy in motion, are catching. If you've ever been around someone who's really, really angry or really, really excited, there's a tendency for their mood to rub off on you. That's why we like to be around certain people, the life of the party, you know, they're always in a good mood, so we're in a good mood, especially as an empath and a feeler. We tend to absorb those feelings and we really know it when someone's in a good mood, it feels good. And we really know it when someone's in a bad mood, oh, that pops up too. But the thing about being a highly sensitive person or an empath or an intuitive is that it's so easy to pick up on the world's energy. And even if we're not watching the news and we're not totally tuned into social media, it hits us out of the blue, especially right now. And it's very important before we go to bed at night to unplug from everybody else's thoughts, worries, their opinions, all of that, we wanna just pull our energy out of it and come back to ourself. So that's the first thing I invite you to do before you go to bed. That's gonna help ensure that you don't get woken up as easily by some of these wild, just thoughts that come out in the middle of the night. Um, I had a good friend once, and it's happened to me many a time, but her story's popping into my mind, where she was asleep and she started dreaming about her sister. And next thing you know, she like woke up straight out of her sleep and said, oh my God, you know, like I need to call my sister. And it was the middle of the night, so she texted her. And sure enough, her sister was awake and thinking about her. So our thoughts always find their target. And in the middle of the night, and I'll get into this a little bit later on, my third question, um, we can be woken up by other people's thoughts or just energies. So the second question I want to invite you to play with is, where is your space holding the dirt? <laughs> now I'm getting a little bit of playful tongue in cheek here. And again, from like the everyday modern vernacular mainstream practice, I totally believe that the clutter in our space is a reflection of what's going on internally, yes. And I believe that that can affect our sleep. But from an energy perspective, um, have you ever considered how your bed or your room can hold the energy of the previous evening's dreams? This is something that drives me absolutely bonkers and usually gets a couple of chuckles and eye rolls um, from some of my friends. But when I lay down, at, lay down to sleep at night, if I haven't cleared the energy of my bed, as soon as my head hits the pillow, the dreams from the previous night, the worries, the thoughts, they all come rushing back, especially the feeling of it. If there was a feeling of unease or like, I don't wanna be in the bedroom, I, I don't wanna go to sleep right now because it makes me think about things I haven't done yet and what I still need to do. And it would drive me bonkers. And it wasn't until I really started to say, okay, I need to clear this almost invisible dirt, just like washing the bed sheets. And I can do that through a variety of modalities, whether it's ringing bells or having certain crystals nearby, sometimes even underneath my pillows. But it makes a big difference to clear the energy in your space before you even go to bed at night. Now, the final question I invite you to ask is, who's waking you up in the middle of the night? The sleep in general is a time for healing. And again, as 
an intuitive, as an empath, as a big feeler, a highly sensitive person, we can be affected by what our friends are going through, our family members. Maybe they have a problem, an problem or an issue they're trying to solve. And, you know, just as they say, you know, sleep on a problem, we might sleep on our own problems and come to some resolution, whether we're aware of it or not. When we wake up, we get an aha. But we can also solve other people's problems while we're sleeping. And sometimes they rattle around in our in our dreams and they come up from the subconscious and it just throws us. So we might wake up. So for example, I was dreaming about my sister-in-law last week. It was really crazy, crazy time in our family. Lots of unexpected things going on and she was forefront in my mind. And I just, I was having conversations with her and, and trying to basically in my dreams come to um, just support and to love and to offer healing. And the most amazing thing was, was I woke up with this splitting headache in my forehead. I couldn't believe it. So I did a moment where I just grounded. I sent her love and light. I sent a prayer for her that the angels would watch over her and that she would just feel that universal love. And I called my energy back to myself because I know that as much as I want to help, if I am just giving my energy away, if I'm trying to um, essentially do a practice without healthy energetic boundaries, I'm going to wake up feeling drained. I'm not going to feel well rested. So sleep is so vitally important for, for a myriad of variety of reasons. But when it comes, comes to sleep from an energetic perspective, I really invite you to just run through those three questions before you go to bed at night, which is when was the last time you unplugged? And I mean, bringing your energy back to you, your physically unplugging. You're pulling the cords, so to speak. You're releasing the attachments to any of, you know, the collective consciousness, what everybody else is worrying about, what's coming down the pipeline. Like, not tonight, bro. I'm getting my sleep. And you pull your energy back to you and you release those cords. The second thing is, where's the dirt hiding in your space? Take time to clear your space so when your head hits that pillow, you're not falling into the energy, the emotions, the memories of the previous night's dreams. That's very, very important. And I do that with crystals or bells or smudging and saging. And then the final question to ask yourself is, who's waking you up in the middle of the night? Is there a family member or a friend whose problems you're trying to solve? And it's great to be there and be supportive, but it's better to send them love and light and to say a prayer for them rather than letting your energy go wandering in the middle of the night and try to problem solve because it just tends to wake you up. So let me know if you have ever had a dream in the middle of the night where you've woken up thinking about someone. Maybe you contact them the next day and they're like, oh my gosh, I was thinking about you or I was dreaming about you too. It's amazing what we can do in the dream world. So thank you for joining me, Katie. It's great to have you, Stephanie. Thanks so much. And Don, hello. All right, guys, have an amazing, amazing day. I hope that you sleep well tonight and I'll catch you all on the flip side. Bye, guys. Oh, hey, P.S. If you want to continue the conversation and help clear your space, I've got little goodies, so click on the link above. <laughs> okay, bye.